without pain without sorrow no one can enter into the kingdom of god suffering is very much a part of the life it's a kind of a paradox there is good about suffering there is painful things about suffering but the good we don't see many time therefore we complain when suffering comes so when we are going through suffering we need to know this is very much allowed by god into my life so that there is something which god is working in me as we were singing something god is working in me normally honestly we ask this question to god lord what are you doing with my life when we are going through pain why are you so far away from me why are you silent how long lord some of you may be going through suffering for a long time how long lord why don't you answer my cry why are you putting me in this pain lord lord come and help me don't you hear my prayer yes there was a man by the name of joseph merrick he was called as elephant man i'm sure you know he had a he had a, a disease called elephant elephantiasis which actually causes abnormal growth in the bones in the skin in other systems of the body i mean if you look like it is just so weird i was trying to put this picture but i thought no it might not really help some of you you maybe get scared joseph was born in england and very appeared normal until the age of 3 by the age of 11 his deformities has grown very severe at that time his mother died who was only her his help and later his new stepmother when she came in she kicked him out of the house he became a door to door salesman but suffered constant harassment from people they didn't want to look at him his condition worsened protruding cauliflower like growths appeared in his head in his body and different parts in right hand forearm he just became so useless no longer able to do any physical work he took a job as a curiosity attraction in front of a in a in a front of a shop they told him to stand here so that there will be people coming at least for an attraction at least they will walk into our shop but you know what happened that after that after some days this guy who promised him money he robbed him abandoned him he had to return back to london and went to this hospital where he received permanent living quarters despite of all the adversaries joseph was very very cheerful he was very gentle he never grew bitter in his life he never asked the question to god god why are you doing this to me he was a very strong believer in the lord at the age of 27 he died one of his letters thanksgiving unto god he writes he loves this poem or hymn written by isaac watts and this is his uh, words isaac watts word but he loved to sing and read this poem often tis true my form is something odd but blaming me is blaming god could i create myself anew i would not fail in pleasing you if i could reach from pole to pole or grasp the ocean with a span i would be measured by the soul the minds the standard of man suffering my brothers and sisters is god's will sometimes for our lives you might say why is god's will how can suffering be god's will for my life let us take a moment to look at the life of jesus christ and ask this question do you think it was god's will for jesus to suffer do you think it was god's will for jesus to die for on the cross go through all those pain do you think so you may say what a stupid question is that of course it was god's will okay just think about those all the awful painful things that jesus went through when he was on the earth especially when he was on his way to the cross to fulfill the father's will judas iscariot this disciple of jesus christ who walked with him for three and a half years who was very close to jesus christ at the end what did he do he betrayed him 
for 30 pieces of silver coins. Pontius Pilate, before whom Jesus was standing for trial, he said, I don't find any fault in him. But what did he do? He gave him into the hands of this mob who was crying out, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Pharisees, the so-called religious people, they, they handed him over to the Romans. Pontius Pilate may have done that for political gains. And these Roman soldiers, how cruelly they treated him. He was, the crown of thorns were crushed, were pushed down on his head and he was mocked. His beard was pulled out. They jeered at him. They mocked at him. They spit on him. Who? The very son of God who came from heaven, leaving all the glory to serve humanity. This is how he went through all that suffering. They flogged him so badly, so cruelly. Ruthless people. And you know the whip that they use, you know that very well. The, every lashes of that whip at the end of it, it uh, there was a twisted metal. And when they, put, when, they, when they lifted this whip to uh, hit on his back, every time it hit, it struck on that body and they pulled out. And every time, pieces of flesh came out of his back. 39 times they whipped on his back. By the end, what do you think happened to him? Well, there was hardly any flesh on his back. They kicked him. And after this, that's not the end. He was asked to carry this heavy, rough, rugged cross and they pushed him on his shoulders. They carried it uphill. He fell. He stood up, fell, stood up several times. And every time he fell, they whipped on him. And finally, with a lot of difficulty, he reaches on the top of this mountain. There they threw this cross and threw his body also on the cross. Nailed those, hammered those dry nails on his hands and his feet. All this time, these guys didn't have any sympathy. They were enjoying him going through that pain. Was it Father's will to, for him to go through that pain? Was it Father's will for Jesus to go through that sufferings? Was it the end? No. Hanging there on that cross, he's not able to breathe because as he's hanging, his lungs are choked. So every time he had to breathe, he has to lift himself up with his toes, which is nailed on that cross. And so when he lifted up his toes, it feet hurted. Even if he feet hurted, at least he gets, gets a breath to breathe and he died why did Jesus die why did he suffer if uh, Acts chapter 4 28 if you have an IV or a, an LT read that 4.28 NIV or NLT. And 27 onwards would be good to read. 4, 28, Acts. Okay. Somebody courageous, bold, shy to read. <laughs> yeah. Nobody. I'll read it. Okay. All right. 27 and 28. Acts 4, 27, 28. In fact, this has happened hmm. here in this very city. For Herod, Antipas, Pontius, Pilate, the governors, the Gentiles, and the people of Israel were all united against Jesus, hmm. your holy servant, whom you, whom you anointed. Hmm. But everything they did was determined beforehand hmm. according to your will. Now see that. Verse 28, what does it say? Everything that they did was predetermined. Is that how did you read? Everything that they did was? Everything they did was determined beforehand. 
determine beforehand. It was Father's will for him to go through that. Judas Iscariot, Pontius Pilate, Herod Antipas, mob, Pharisees, Roman, this drunk, cruel, ruthless soldiers, everything. Cross was not an accident. It was the will of God. In the ages past, he has determined that this had to happen. Not to see Jesus, his son, going through this pain and suffering, but through this cross, which will become the only source of salvation for the whole mankind. There is a purpose for cross. There is a purpose. So, therefore, I want to submit to you, there is a purpose for every suffering which the Lord brings into your life, which the Lord allows into your life. It may be difficult, it may be painful, but the Lord, if you will continue to fix your eyes upon the Lord, have faith in God, you will know it is for your good and for His glory. Some of the good of God through that suffering, you don't realize in your lifetime, you don't realize in your lifetime. It may be in your ne next generation, but you, got, you are asked to cling on, cling on to God. You got to have this understanding. Every suffering that the Lord allows in your life as a believer when you go through the suffering, it is God ordained for you, for your good, for your formation and for His glory. We are not called to live a comfortable life. Christian life is not an invitation. Christ is not inviting people to come and live a comfortable, convenient, luxurious life. No, He is not. If at all that kind of picture is in your mind, I'm, let me tell you, that's completely wrong. Some people may paint that in your mind, but let me tell you, they are wrong. That's not what Bible paints. For anyone who wants to enter into the kingdom of God, they shall be persecuted. They shall go through Severe kind of struggles, yeah. Some of you may not have had this struggle, let me tell you. Some of you sitting over, maybe you have never gone through any kind of struggles or suffering. The most, maybe a mosquito come and biting you. <laughs> that may be your suffering. <laughs> or somebody looked a little, uh, stared at you. That's your suffering. Well, that's not suffering. But whatever enemy plans against you for your destruction, let me tell you, God can abort that and turn around that even that he has done, enemy has caused, he can turn around for your blessing, for, your, for his glory and for your goodness. He can do that. That may still leave some scars upon you, upon your life, upon your body. But as you give thanksgiving to the Lord, He will turn it around for the blessing of not only yours, but of many other people and for His glory. But so therefore you must know very well, very clearly, this issue, this challenge that I have, or maybe I'm going through, it is for His glory. Every one of us. All, to, all of us sitting over here, maybe in any one of the category. One, you've already gone through a struggle. Two, you are in a struggle. Three, you're getting prepared for another one. All of us are in either of these three. Because we are. We will go through struggles in life. God permits. Many times God permits what He hates to accomplish that which He loves in us. He permitted what he ate, like the cruelty he, he permitted because he is bringing out something very, very beautiful. Let me tell just one more thing and close over here. How did death come into the world? Death came through Sin. The wages of sin is death. What was the intent of death? God did not create death. What was the intent of Satan? Caused it. What was the intent of death? Eternal separation from God. Right? What did God do with that? He did not eliminate death. Death is still there. But now, 
that death is our victory. Praise God. Death is not separating us from God. Death is in fact drawing us more closer to God. This is what, this is, I, I want to tell you, you see suffering like that. God has not eliminated suffering. God has not eliminated death, but he has changed it completely. He has given a different meaning to that. Death. Death is not a failure. Death is not a, a, a separation from God. Death is not a defeat for us. Death is a victory for us. Because the power of death and the sting of the death has been destroyed. Now death is a door for us to enter into that beautiful, eternal, glorious life with the Lord Jesus Christ. Where, O oh death, is your sting? Where, O oh death, is your victory? It has been swallowed up. Praise be unto the Lord who has given us victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. The same thing. Suffering, where, O oh suffering, is your victory? Where, O oh suffering, pain, is your sting? The Lord has given us victory through the power of His strength in us. Suffering is going to produce something more beautiful in my life. Praise the Lord. That's how we have to see it is only possible when you understand the suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, don't run away. Don't get defeated. Don't get disappointed with suffering. As I said, most of us seated here, I'm sure, has not gone through sufferings. The other day I uh, was hearing a story of this woman who came for a meeting. Her hope, both legs are not there. Amputated. Blinded. Both the kidneys not functioning. Has got severe issues with the heart. Three fingers are not there. It's got some accident. And she comes to this meeting. And one of the ladies asked her, oh, it's been, I mean, I've not seen you for, I'm seeing you for the first time. I'm glad though you made it for this meeting. I'm so thank you for coming. She said, at least I could come now before I lose more parts of my body. She had the joy of the Lord in her heart. She was not bitter at all. I don't know how many of you have heard about Johnny Erickson. At the age of, I think, 20 or 22, she was going for a swimming and she or she jumps into this uh, ocean or river or I don't know what is that and she hit her neck or her spine somewhere and she did not know what was that. And since that time, now she's 60 years old, 40 years she is confined to this wheelchair and she is a great blessing to people all over the world. I think thousands and thousands of people. She still has questions. She still has questions, but she says, God is doing something beautiful that I don't understand through my life. For the last 40 years, she has been witnessing the Lord. So many testimonies like that. My brothers and sisters, God has a purpose in every suffering that you're going through. Don't get bitter. Don't get hardened. Don't get disappointed. Draw close to the Lord. Every suffering will increase your capacity for God. Every pain in your life will increase your capacity and intimacy for God, for Jesus Christ. If that is happening, praise God. God is, God is happy about it and be thankful to the Lord because that is one of the intent of every suffering. 